Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at the interior of the sun. Of course, we can't really take a look at the interior of the sun because it's too hot in there, but we have a pretty good idea generally how the interior of the sun is structured, and we know that it's structured in three main regions. We have the central core of the sun, which only takes up about, oh, between 2 and 3 percent of the total volume of the sun, and of course, it's really dense there, so even though it has a very small, minute volume of the sun, it actually has quite a bit of mass of the sun because the density there is quite high. Notice that the density of the core is about 150 grams per cubic centimeter, which is like seven or eight times the density of gold, and gold, of course, is really, really dense. Now, the temperature at the core is about 10 to 15 million degrees. Towards the very center, it's closer to 15 million. Towards the edge of where the core begins, it's around 10 million degrees because 10 million degrees is the minimum temperature required for nuclear fusion to take place. So nuclear fusion is taking place at ferocity, for a very ferocious rate uh, in the core, converting hydrogen to helium at a tune of about 600 billion, or is it more like, yeah, about 600 billion kilograms of, um, of hydrogen be converted to helium every single second. And so the, the mass defect, the amount of mass that's directly converted to energy is about 9 billion pounds of mass every second simply converted to energy. And that energy then slowly works its way out of the sun and eventually when it breaks the surface, shines in all directions, that's the light, the energy that we receive from the sun. So beyond the core, there's what we call the radiation zone. This is a, a place where the temperature is still really hot. So you can imagine at this point right here, the temperature is about 10 million Kelvin. And then the temperature slowly declines till it reaches the end of the, what we call radiation zone, where the temperature is about 2 million degrees Kelvin. So the so photons, they slowly make their way out to the surface. And the reason why it's so slow is because they get bounced around everywhere and they keep bouncing. And so it's kind of like a, what we call a random walk. They move in all different directions, but slowly, since more and more energy is produced at the core to nuclear fusion, that energy pressure just keeps pushing the photons slowly outward, and they slowly make progress outward at a rate of about two feet per hour. So it takes an enormous amount of time for the radiation finally to make it all the way towards the outside of the sun. It's estimated that it takes about anywhere from 150 to 100 to 200,000 years for the radiation uh, that was produced at the core of the sun to make it all the way out the sun. So this is an enormous amount of time. So the sunlight that we receive from the sun today was produced at the center, at the core, about 200,000 years ago. So it's really, really difficult for that energy to find and make its way out of the sun. So this radiation zone, this is where the radiation is just pushing and moving and bouncing all between the material in here and slowly working its way out. Now what happens to this point where the temperature drops to about 2 million degrees, it reaches a point where some of the heavy atoms in the sun, some of the heavy materials, actually will attract enough electrons to the point where they actually become atoms. And then instead of having a pure plasma here, we now have a different kind of material here that can, where the radiation can make it through a little bit easier. And this then becomes what we call the convection zone. That's where the material is less dense and able to move from one location to another, and we have now what we call convection currents that are set up, where this is kind of like a, a region where this material begins to boil. There's kind of like a boiling action, boiling action in a way, the best way to, to uh, think about it. And so this boiling action then causes material to well up to the surface slowly, and when it gets to the surface, it kind of bubbles up, and if you take a look at this picture here, you can see you have these, all these bright and dark blotches all over the surface of the sun. Those are called granules. Those granules are simply placed at the surface of the sun where that hot material kind of wells up, boils up, and as it boils up, it radiates that energy out into space, and as it radiates out the energy of space, the gases near the surface then cool down, and they then sink, the cooler gases then sink back in the surface, down below the surface of the sun as more gas wells up. And so this happens in all these various places where the where the stuff kind of like bubbles up and then, the, then as they, the, the uh, surface of the sun, the, the gas of the surface of the sun then give off the energy, they become cooler and they sink back down and this then happens all over the sun, these things, these granules bubbling up and then sinking back in the sun and so it has this convection action all around everywhere on the whole surface of the sun. Now density wise, notice that by the time you reach the the outer region of the radiation zone into the inner region of the convection zone, the density now has dropped 
to less than the density of water on the Earth. Still dense for a gas, very dense for a gas, but much, much less dense. And finally, by the time the gases get all the way to the very surface of the Sun, the density at the surface of the Sun is only about one ten thousand the density of the atmosphere of the Earth. So extremely rarefied. So basically the Sun is very dense and very heavy near the center and very rarefied with this very rarefied gas at very high temperatures bubbling up and down like that and releasing the energy off into the solar system. So the total region, so the core is about 175,000 kilometers out from the center of the Sun. Then the width of the convection band is about 200,000 kilometers and the region between the two, the radiation zone, is about 300,000 kilometers in radius. So from the core out to the convection zone. So that gives you kind of a feel of how the interior of the sun is structured and what happens in the interior of the sun. So it's basically a boiling soup of hot, dense gas kind of in a plasma form where the radiation slowly, very slowly makes its way out until it gets to the point where you actually make the gases boil and move, where the gases then move up to the surface, give out the energy and radiation, and then plummet back down into the sun where new layers, new regions of this interior sun bubble to the surface and so forth in this constant bubbling action causing the granule structure of the surface of the sun. And that is another look at the interior of the sun.